I want to start with um, lifestyle and culture. Work consumed my life. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started with the cycling. And not only did I fall, but I also took someone else down with me. Being a Asian woman here, I will say that I have experienced racism here. Do I want my kids to go through this? Hello, it's Victoria. So um, I wanted to sit down and make this video just to um, reflect on the past six months of living here in The Hague, Netherlands. Um, I, I can't believe it's been six months already. Time just flies. I, it's so hard to wrap my head around that. Um, just to recap, um, my husband and I moved from Toronto, Ontario um, to the Netherlands about six months ago and we currently live in The Hague and uh, I moved here predominantly for my work, which I had found this opportunity back home in Toronto and thankfully the company paid for and managed all of our immigration and um, our traveling expenses and relocation and everything. So that transition um, was really nice here and um, yeah, I really appreciate all the support that we received from my company to making this transition so smooth. Um, but anyways, yeah, I wanted to just talk about the different components of our life here in the Netherlands um, and I kind of split it up into different categories and I have my notes right here so I hope you don't mind me looking back and forth a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to start with um, lifestyle and culture. Um, so the first thing I want to point out is that the pace here is much more manageable. I wouldn't say that it's slow, but it's definitely healthier and more relaxing. Like back when I was working um, in Toronto, especially at, at the tech company that I was that I started my career at, um, I was probably working 14 hours a day and just work consumed my life. Work was my life and um, it was just not a healthy place to be in mentally, physically, but you know, that was the norm. I didn't know anything else. I just came straight out of school and that was the job that I had had for four years and that was, that was my reality and it was just not healthy whatsoever. But like when I compare my life in Toronto in that job to my life now in my current job, um, not so that I never get stressed. I do get stressed. I have deadlines, but um, there's just more time to do a good job and truly really think through the things that need to get done. And I really, really appreciate that. It's just so nice to kind of have that, have that breathing space. And that's the norm. Like people don't ask like, oh, I need this done today. Or like, you need to get this done right now. Like people don't expect that. And I really appreciate that because it's just, it just makes the work so much more manageable. And it allows me personally to just put more thought into the things that I'm doing and to do a better job. So I really appreciate the pace from the work side and also just like, just living as well. Like I love how I can see people just taking walks throughout the day and just like having a coffee outside, even in the winter. It's just really nice to be part of that type of environment. Um, and I'd also say that like, it's a healthier lifestyle as well. I mean, I would say people here are generally more active and healthy, especially with um, all the outdoor activities and so many things to do. And also the cycling. Oh my gosh, don't even get me started with the cycling. I have really embraced that part of living here. Um, I cycle to work almost every day which is about seven kilometers away from where we live. So since I'm a very slow cycler, it takes me about 30 minutes to get to the office. And I just love that part of my day. It's just a great way to just really wake up from sleep uh, and to just have like, you know, a breath of fresh air, to have like my heart pumping at the start of the day before I get started. So it's, um, it's just a really great, part of my routine that I love. And the only part that is not great is that when the weather is not good, like I'm still cycling and that makes it unpleasant, seriously. Like like with the rain and um, just the dampness all the time, sometimes it's just not, it's not that nice, but still I appreciate the physical activity and I still cycle as much as I can. Um, 
mostly because it is healthy, but also because I can save money on public transport as well. So if I have the opportunity to cycle, I am most probably going to take that opportunity. Um, and speaking of cycling, I do have a little bit of a story time. Okay, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. About two weeks ago, um, the weather was really crazy. I had never experienced it before. It was basically icy rain and it slicked not only the roads, but the bike lanes as well. And so I was going about my regular routine and I started cycling to work. And pretty much two minutes after I started cycling, I just lost control of my bike and I fell. And it was embarrassing. Um, and you know, at that moment, I was like, I should probably just turn around, go home and work from home. Um, because it was only two minutes like outside of my house and I already like face planted on the floor. But whatever, I just continued. And thankfully I made it to work in one piece. There weren't any other incidents, but the issues started again when I was going back home. And during the day I was thinking, oh, you know, the sun probably warmed up like the temperature and the ice is probably gone by now, but no, it was not gone. And it was much worse because it was dark as well. And I started riding my bike and I completely lost control again. And not only did I fall, but I also took someone else down with me. I, I apologize profusely. I was just so embarrassed. Um, and I, and thankfully he was okay as well. I got back up on my bike and um, not half a second later, I fell immediately again. And I fell right in front of the person that I crashed into and um, he was super empathetic towards me. And yeah, I was just embarrassed more than anything. So then I told him, I was like, okay, please just go ahead of me. Like, I don't want to crash into you or do anything else that's silly. And I, I just asked him to carry on on his way so I won't get in his way anymore. So he started going like he started going on the bike path and then I started um, I thought it would be a better idea to ride on the road because I thought there'd be more traction with you know the cars going back and forth on the ice. So I did have better luck with going on the road. And then when I was um, when I was you know just cycling super slowly, I noticed that the guy that I crashed into he was walking his bike and I was like I, I stopped and I was like oh my gosh like are you okay? Like, is your bike damaged? Because I thought I damaged his bike when I was, um, when I crashed into him. But he explained to me that he was fine and he was just reorienting himself. And he told me that while he was still on the bike path, um, riding his bike, he turned around to see if I was okay. And then when he turned around, like when he moved his like head over his shoulder, um, he fell. <laughs> he fell because he was checking to see if I was okay. And I was just, I didn't know what to say to that except I'm so sorry. It was just so terrible that all this happened. Um, and anyways, we started chatting after that and I made a new friend and we found out that we worked at the same company and it was just, um, it was a funny way to break the ice with someone, like literally. Um, anyways, <laughs> everything was fine after that. But then by the time that I got home, I realized that I popped the back tire of my bike and my light in the front was broken and I had broke my lock. So many things happened and you know, in the future, if there are conditions like that again, I am just gonna stay home. It's just not worth it. All the falling, um, damaging my bike, it's just not worth it. But anyways, Cycling is still great. I love it. And I just love that it's part of like my daily routine. Um, oh, okay. So I also want to talk about um, like just the people here. And you've probably seen videos about like how Dutch people like have a different way of communicating um, that may be a little bit different from what North Americans are used to. Um, I was brought up being very like, um, consider it with my like verbally like saying like thank you and like apologizing a lot and just like verbally and just use my body language to express like um, my intentions um, and I would say that it is true that Dutch people are less so that way um, they're more direct and they kind of just like they just get to the point, but I would never say that they're rude. Um, they are just more direct and that's something that um, is just different. And I feel like I've gotten used to it so far, especially with 
like talking to random people um, in my regular interactions or talking to my Dutch colleagues. Um, it's definitely just something that I don't even think about anymore. Um, oh, and I also want to talk about um, being a Asian woman here, um, here in the Netherlands. Um, and this is this is a little bit touchy for some people, um, but I'm just speaking from my own experience. And I want to say that specifically in The Hague, um, it is it has a very international population. There are so many people who are expats who move here specifically for work, um, not only because there are international organizations, but also just because the government policies really encourage um, people to like reside here from other countries. And so it's a very densely populated um, city with many, many expats. And so my hope was here would that be it would be similar to Toronto, like Toronto, it's a melting pot of every single type of culture. And I love that it was it was normal to be different. Um, however, I, I I will say that I have experienced racism here. Um, there were at least two occasions where I would be walking the city center and someone would obnoxiously say ni hao or something like that and they would just yell it across the street. Um, and for me, like I just shake it off and it's like whatever, but it's just, I never experienced anything like that in Toronto. Um, and it was just uncomfortable. Like, like what do people aim to accomplish by saying stuff like that? Yeah, so there, like those types of things happen. And also, even in my workplace, um, there have definitely been times where like people, you know, people ask like, oh, like, where are you from? Like, cause I obviously don't have like a, I don't speak Dutch. I have a North American accent. And when I tell people, oh yeah, I'm, I'm from Toronto, Canada. I was born and raised there. Um, and they're like, oh, but where are your parents from? Like. I mean, that question in itself is not offensive, but I just really don't like how it makes me feel different. Um, and I definitely am a visible minority at work. Um, the majority of people at my work are older, white, um, and I, do, I look different and I don't blame people for, you know, wanting to ask about like where I'm from. That's totally fine, but it just, it doesn't feel good when that's, something that I have to deal with on a regular basis. Um, and so, yeah, that's part of like the downside of living here, I guess, in an area that I hoped would have been more international, but it's not, um, like people pointed out, <laughs> people pointed out that I'm different and uh, that, that doesn't always feel good. I, I definitely wouldn't say that I experience this type of thing on a daily basis, but it's enough where I'm like, Mm, like, I don't know if I could see myself living here like long term, you know, like it's not something that's made up in my head right now where it's like, oh, I'm definitely moving home because of this. But it's just something that, you know, do I want my kids to go through this? <laughs> because my kids are going to be Chinese. They're going to look different. Um, so it's just, yeah, something that I've been thinking about. Anyways, let's move on to a more fun topic, which is traveling. Like Dutch companies offer five weeks vacation, six weeks vacation, and then that's definitely the most budget friendly way of traveling. Even eating at restaurants, like the quality and maintaining friendships and also like making new friends here. 